What's going on guys? So we are out here with the Coachman Brookstone with the new Reese Goose Box on the front of it. This thing is absolutely cool. And we're going to be taking it out on a trip relatively soon. And I wanted to give the thing a bath. So we actually just wrapped up giving it a bath yesterday. And I wanted to talk to you about a few things you want to be very cautious of whenever you decide to give your RV a bath. Hang tight. I'll be right back. <laughs> Okay, so the vast majority of RVs on the market are either going to have a fiberglass gel coat side or they're going to have a, an aluminum corrugated side, a stick and tin unit versus a laminated fiberglass unit. And there's going to be a lot of them out there as well that have a full body paint job, basically an automotive style base coat, clear coat paint job, where they put the base coat on and then they cover it with clear. Sometimes they put three or four layers of clear on the outside. Our specific unit is a fiberglass unit, but the backer board to the fiberglass is Asdel, which is something I talk about in a lot of videos. Basically a composite panel that's essentially impervious to rot or mildew and things like that, simply because it just doesn't hold water like wood does, and it's more of like a plastic material than anything. That said, yeah, we recently gave the Brookstone a bath, and you know, there's a lot of things that you have to be very cautious of when you give an RV a bath. You can't just hit the side with a pressure sprayer, get everything off, and then call it a day. You really have to be careful because there's a lot of ways water can get into your RV and even into the sidewall if you're not careful. So the first thing you always want to do is kind of spray the outside down with a water hose. Just spray it very softly, put it on maybe the shower feature and give your, uh, your RV a bit of a shower bath. But don't spray it directly at or under the windows. Kind of arch the water over and let it drip down. And the same reason you want to do that is the same reason why you wouldn't want to use a pressure sprayer to wash your RV. And the main reason why is the windows. So we have frameless windows on this RV and you can't see it quite as well, but on RVs that don't have frameless windows, basically kind of like the door here where it's a standard frame window, you're going to have little slits at the bottom called weep holes. Those weep holes are designed to help drain condensation and moisture out from the inside of the glass to the outside of the RV. But what does that mean? That means that the opposite can hold true. If you spray your windows on the bottom you can actually force water into your RV and that's something you really want to avoid doing for a lot of reasons but it can lead to delamination it can lead to water damage on the inside of your RV and it can just kind of lead to a sloppy mess so the best thing you want to avoid doing is using a pressure sprayer if you are going to wash your RV I generally recommend the very best way to wash your RV is by taking one of those telescoping car washing brushes hook a hose to it and just gently clean the side of your RV. You shouldn't have to use a lot of force. You shouldn't have to use a lot of pressure. It's really just rinsing dust, dirt, and debris off. Now, there are several different brands of chemicals that are available to help wash the RV, and you really just want to pick the one that you want to pick. I mean, there are some pretty high-end brands. There are some lower-end brands. There are some very reputable brands. Uh, there are some lower cost brands, but at the end of the day, they all work just about as effectively as one another. But something you wanna be cautious of is after you've washed your RV and you've let it dry, whether you dried it by hand or you let it sun dry, a lot of folks think that's a really good time to apply a wax to their RV. And the challenge is, is that most people who apply a wax to their RV don't really realize that they're applying it generally to the outside oxidated part of their fiberglass. So they're essentially applying a wax film on top of oxidation. And not only does it not allow it to stick, but it can also essentially protect that oxidation. And the oxidation can lift off and you can get some really ugly blotchy spots on your RV. So when it comes to waxing an RV, if you're gonna wax your RV, you need to clean the surface first. And the best thing to use would be some type of a cleaning wax. But one thing you wanna be cautious of, the gel coat used on RV surfaces is not the same gel coat used in the marine industry. It's not very thick, which means once the gel coat finish, that outer finish of the fiberglass comes off, it's very difficult to really do anything that's gonna give you any true protective advantage over the remaining fiberglass underneath it. So. What I generally say is I'm not a big fan or a big proponent of waxing a gel coated RV. I mean, if you have a full body paint RV, that's a whole different story because you're waxing the clear coat. But on RVs that are like this, where it's a gel coated fiberglass finish that's laminated to Asdel backer, 
your best bet is just to keep it clean. Your best bet is just to keep stains from forming. And if you see something dark or something kind of obnoxious forming on the exterior of your RV, get it cleaned off as quickly as possible. Because what you're going to find out is the typical marine products or even the typical waxes that you might put on a vehicle or a boat will not hold up the same on an RV. And they can actually cause for some pretty unsightly little stains and little areas that just look ugly over time. So again, the key message here is, you know, be very, very gentle when you wash the exterior of your RV. There's probably a lot of different things that are hanging off the side of your RV. Do not use a pressure sprayer. Do not spray water up towards the bottom of your windows. Let water kind of fall from the top like a rainstorm. Use a very soft bristle brush to actually clean the side of your RV with the soap of your choice. Just don't use anything that's too harsh or that has any detergents in it that could cause premature damage to the exterior finish of your RV. And then use that same kind of shower effect to rinse your RV off to basically get all the dirt that you've broken loose off of your RV. When you're done, you can either hand dry it, which is kind of difficult for most. I think most people just let their RV sun dry. But once it's dry, I don't recommend applying any type of a polish or a wax to the finish of your RV unless your RV is brand new and it hasn't really been exposed to the sun and you really don't have any potential damage that's already happened to the exterior gel coat. And if you look at ours, we wash ours enough that it stays pretty dang nice and shiny. We don't have too much pitting. We don't have any kind of major oxidation going on. Um, the walls are still really smooth. And if I wanted to put some type of a polish or a wax on the RV, I probably could. But I've never really felt the need to, only because, you know, it's one of those things that as long as you keep it clean, you keep it nice looking, you wash the dirt off, you generally don't need a wax material. Soft bristle brushes are probably the most common that will do the least amount of damage, but a lot of people would prefer to use like a microfiber washcloth and they'll put it on the end of one of those soft bristle brushes um, so it protects the end so it keeps the bristles from actually making contact with the gel coat. And that's probably your very best solution. Take a microfiber, you know, big microfiber towel, throw it over the brush so your brushes aren't actually doing anything except providing kind of a pressure surface to help remove some of the dirt and once you've done that spray it down with a hose but spray it down on the shower setting from up high and let the water kind of hit the side from the top and run down to wash all that dirt away anyways guys i sure hope you've enjoyed this video i'll put a few products in the description of this video that i have used in terms of soap and other things like that that so far i haven't had any issues with i know there's probably some professional detailers that are out there that have better suggestions so if they leave comments in the comment section i definitely say you know check them out and do your research about those as well guys if you haven't had a chance please take a moment subscribe to the channel give me a thumbs up and we'll talk to you again real soon